Dave Palumbo with Muscle Serpents University and I'm back and today we're going to do a little video about the cool pickups I picked up in 2018 and 19. A lot of people want to know not necessarily what I produced but what cool stuff I got and I think one of the most coolest and everyone who comes to my snake facility always tells me it's the coolest is from Eric Burke. You probably know him from Morelia Python Radio. Uh, this is a male granite zebra carpet python. Look at that thing. Is that crazy? It doesn't even look like a carpet python. It looks like a different like species altogether. I don't know what it does, but it's, it's been growing. I, uh, hopefully he'll be breeding for me next year. And he's very, uh, he likes the camera. He likes Tyler and my video guy too. Like never before. <laughs> Once again, it's always cool to buy, to get unique stuff that you don't produce because you kind of still are that like same kid in the, in the toy store who wants the toy that you didn't think existed. You know, you think you got it all and then you find something, oh my God, I want that, I want that. And so I got a few cool pickups. This might be the coolest, but uh, there's more, so stay tuned. This next uh, snake is obviously a ball python and it is from my good friend Adam Wilkes in New York. Uh, both of us met through the bodybuilding industry. He sells my nutritional supplements in his store, Shredded RX, but he also breeds snakes and he act I actually, him and I have you know, sold each other snakes back and forth. And this is a GHI Mojave clown, male. Unbelievable. When I saw it, I said, Adam, I gotta have it. And he, uh, he got me to get it from him, and you know what? It was one of the best pickups I think I got of the 2018-19 season. Obviously, this little boy won't be breeding until next year, but he is just exquisite. I love, first of all, I love GHI Mojave. It's one of my favorite morphs in and of itself. You throw clown in with it, and wow. Uh, I could have tried to make it myself, but I figured, you know what? Adam already did it, so he made my life easier, and uh, so I got this little boy from him. and. Once again, I mean, just look at the, look at the, the GHI Mojave is like a solid colored snake and then you add clown and look at all this blushing and look at all this weird little pattern stuff going on. I mean, it's just, there's so much happening in this snake. Uh, if you look at the uh, tail, you got this little scissor-like effect here at the end. And then if you look at his head, there's just like some, some kooky looking, uh, you know, markings on there. And I just, I love that yellowish head he's got and, there's just, there's just not much wrong with this snake. I don't even think you can make anything better than this, to be honest with you. Maybe, maybe you throw a banana into that, I don't know. Obviously, I'm gonna have to tr decide what I wanna breed him to next year, but if I can make more GHI Mojave clowns, I'd be a happy man. This next snake comes from my uh, new friend over at Snake Morphology. I wanna give him a big shout out because this boy is spectacular. He's a super pastel Mojave hypo Banana clown. I mean, can you get any more genes into that thing? And it just looks exquisite. You know, sometimes when you add a lot of genes into a, a snake, it kind of makes it just look like a mess. You know, it kind of washes out all pattern, all color. I think this combination is just is awesome. I think everything, every single gene that's in there you can see. And I think he's going to be a terrific breeder next year for me. Once again, anything clown is awesome. Um, I was l really looking for something hypo clown. That's really what I wanted. And the other stuff kind of came as the bonus plan. That super pastel. Obviously, everything he's going to throw is going to be pastel now. And of course, you know, probably, you know, one of the, the, I guess you could say, bonus plans in this thing would be the banana and the Mojave. So you have a lot going on. I mean, if you just look at all this, this weirdness here, I always think these, these banana clowns that have anything banana and clown in it, just almost look like Picasso took a paintbrush and just really, you know, made a, a special design in there. And they all look different. They all completely have a different pattern. There's not one snake that has the same thing going on. Obviously the Mojave giving you these little circles here. Um, and if you really examine this snake, you keep finding more and more stuff. It's like watching a movie that has a lot of hidden little, you know, private practical jokes in there and you don't really see it until you listen to it like or watch the movie like 25 times. That's what this snake is to me. So once again, I picked up two great male uh, clowns. Hopefully I'll be able to get them into the breeding rotation next year and produce some really cool stuff. Obviously the goal eventually, if I can do it, I'd like to produce a hypo pied clown. Uh, now it seems like I have the components. We'll see if we can do it. It's probably six, six years down the road though. You never know. Let's check out our next snake. 
This next boy is really cool, and I, I'm happy to say that I picked him up this year, but he's already in the breeding rotation. Uh, I'm breeding him to two females. This is an Enchi Orange Dream Pinstripe Red Stripe. Now, Red Stripe seems to be the hottest thing. Everyone's trying to get into Clown. I'm really not worried about Clown right now. I'm trying to do with, uh, get it into a few other projects, but this is an Enchi Orange Dream, which you can see that Orange Dream influence. Pinstripe, now Pinstripe is very orangey in and of itself, and then you got the red stripe, which is down the back, the dorsal red stripe, possible yellow belly. So this guy is a really big powerhouse. He's got that red stripe gene in him. Obviously the orange dream and entry always make everything better. And I'm gonna be, like I said, breeding him to a couple of cool females this year, and we'll see what we can produce. Look at that head pattern. Look at that stamp on his head. That's just like really, really kind of bizarre. It almost looks like a, an arrowhead you'd see uh, on a caveman, you know, from a cave, excuse me, from a cave uh, in an archaeological dig. It's amazing, you know, what, uh, you know, what the industry has become because there's so many great snakes out of there and, you know, you can't produce everything yourself so you have to kind of cheat a little bit and you have to, once again, get some cool stuff from other people. And I think we'll end, I think we'll end today's show. I have a lot of cool stuff. I don't know if I want to show everyone everything but I'm going to end today's show on with a boa because everyone loves the boa stuff and Let's, uh, let's see what I got in my drawers. All right, guys, I lied a little bit. Um, this last boa, this is a boa, as I promised, but I produced her uh, this past year, and I'm pretty proud of her. I, I, I've been showing her off a little bit, and people just love her coloration. This is a blood T-positive, only of Honduran descent, so it's Honduran T-positive. Uh, and it also has the blood gene. They call this the El Diablo. It's a, this is a Central American uh, boa. It's pure dwarf stock. It should remain pretty small, probably live its whole life in a V70 a vision tub. And just one of the most reddest snakes that I've seen. She just ate yesterday, so I don't want to stress her out too much. But I, I love this coloration. I love the, the pattern. Um, I think that it's just so clean. Yes, it's not albino but it's, it's that T-positive albani. You really see no black in the snake whatsoever, and the red from the blood is just, it's just so rich. It's like a, almost like a, when, it, when she was born, she was a little redder. She seems to have gotten a little bit more burnt colored, but I really love it. It's just, it's got such richness to it. If you look at the tail too, the tail is just really super cool. And I think that, you know, once she gets to breeding age in about three, three and a half years, I think she's going to make some, some spectacular, spectacular babies. I, I, I like the fact that everyone's into the albino bloods now and the, even the T-positive bloods and the paradigm bloods, and I've produced a few of those. But I think in this, like, smaller form, the Central American form, with that Honduran T-positive, it's just, it's just a much richer T-positive than the Colombian, you know, T-positives that we have out there, like the Boa Woman Caramel and the BPI. I think this, this snake has got serious potential, and I think as a pet, I mean, who wouldn't want a pet that, can, you know, that doesn't get too big and can live in a V70 tub? It just, this is, this is gonna be the future of boa breeding, I really believe. The, the, I'm trying to keep all my dwarf stock, my Central American stock, as pure as possible, because I really believe that, um, you know, if people wanna have, you know, snakes as pets in the future, you know, right now the ball python market is huge, but let's face it, ball pythons are, I love them, but they're a little boring. Boas have way more personality, and I think this is going to be the future of the snake trade, these dwarf boas. They come in such great variety, and now with all the color variations and the morphs we're mixing together, we're going to see some spectacular, spectacular small little boas uh, that are not going to intimidate people and take up a lot of space, you know, in, in a big cage. You're going to be able to put a lot of them in a small area. And that's what it's all about. It's about not only you know feeding the breeders with, with stock, but also feeding the, the, the young kids and the people who are passionate about the pet trade and the snakes and reptile trade, to have them as pets in their house, whether it be one or two or three or maybe five. But those are the people that are, are buying the stuff from us, and those are the people who are gonna be the future breeders of you know this, this I say I like to say sport, <laughs> this hobby of ours. And after all, we need to nurture the, the, uh, the new people coming up in the sport and in, in, in the sport, in the hobby. This boa is my prediction. For now, though, I'm Dave Palumbo. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed all these videos I've been putting out. I'm, I'm trying to get back into the swing of things again. It was a little tough at the beginning of the year. I had a shoulder surgery, and then, you know, I had a lot of travel I had to do. Now I'm back in it. 
Now I'm going to start showing you all the new stuff we got going on in the 2019 breeding season. I think we're going to start getting some eggs on the ground. I'll show you some of the matchups we have in the coming weeks. Remember, if you love what you're seeing here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit like, turn on your notifications, and let me know what videos you want to see in the future. I'm Dave Palumbo from Muscle Surface University. We'll see you next time.